What's happening guys? My name is Jamie, this is the Norwich Reptile Shed and in this video I'm going to show you and give you all the tools you need to help create an awesome reptile vivarium. Okay, so the number one question I get all the time, uh, normally on Instagram and on the YouTube channel, is how do I um, keep a certain animal and how do I design an enclosure for that animal? Um, not, sp not specifically how I keep the animal, how the person that's messaging me wants to keep the animal, how do they keep the animal. Um, and half the time, I don't know the specifics of that particular animal. If I don't keep that animal, I might not know all the current kind of up-to-date figures um, and just generally the, the stuff. So I normally kind of tap away and get some information and sort of put some stuff together and help people um, with, uh, with a kind of care sheet. But what I also do at the same time is, is show them how they can do that themselves. There's so much stuff we can use to kind of build a big picture um, of how these animals live in the wild, how their habitats look in the wild, and also what other people are doing as well. So this video isn't gonna be um, sort of dissing care sheets. I think care sheets are important to get a broad knowledge of how everyone does it and how people successfully keep a certain animal. And this video isn't gonna be specifically about an animal. So although this video isn't gonna be about a particular species, what I can do later in the video is get some photos up on iNaturalist and we'll compare them to some of the enclosures that I've got and we'll see how similar I got it. Um, and uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's crack on. So number one is care sheets, okay? Um, you can skip the next 30 seconds if you know this, but a quick Google of the species is going to bring up loads of care sheets um, if the animal is a little bit rarer a little bit less kept commonly in the hobby then chances are you'll find someone's written something on a forum somewhere that you can look up um, for free you haven't got to be part of that um, or anything like that um, but go over a few of the top care sheets um, there are really cool places like repti files and stuff like that um, as well as loads of other kind of a little bit more standard ones, maybe magazine um, sort of articles that they've put online. So you can get a kind of real broad kind of spectrum as to what everyone else is doing before you start. Number two is to compare your environmental factors with where that animal lives in the wild. So um, that's going to, well, having a care sheet is going to help you first of all, know if you don't already where that animal might come from. Um, so you've got a, uh, a kind of an area. Um, you can narrow it down to obviously the country or you can narrow it down even further to maybe a few cities where, you know, a city nearby where that animal might be found. Um, and then you can go on a website called WeatherSpark. Now, WeatherSpark is awesome. I use WeatherSpark all the time. But actually, before... Before I go on to um, talk to you about the third um, tip that I've got, um, I was using WeatherSpark all the time before um, using iNaturalist. So uh, I would use that to get things like um, the weather data throughout the year, the high points, the low points, uh, the seasons. It's very important for things like that. You can then simulate the seasons. Um, do they have a slight drop? Do they have a big drop that you can brumate your animals with? All that information, including humidity, rainfall, um, you know, things like how long the the sun is in the sky, how much sunlight you get during the day, during, you know, different seasons. That is all there on WeatherSpark. And all you need to do is kind of pinpoint your animal to a rough 
location near a city potentially or an airport something like that that you can get some sort of specific data for that uh, part of the country that you're going for and here is the weather spark app so um if you've seen any of my old videos you might have spotted the crested gecko vivarium uh one uh so let's go for crested geckos on weather spark so this is weatherspark.com and we're going to go for new oh can't spell clumsy fingers new caledonia probably haven't got to write it all in there we go and this is going to bring up uh temperatures uh, everything like that from new caledonia so what have we got we've got advertising um here's the climate so we can kind of have a good look at that we can download it if we want um and we've got average high and low temperatures rainfall so we we can see how much rain falls in everything we need to know to create an environment sunrise sunset all of that sort of stuff it's all there and uh it's there for the taking we can we can see it we can use it um, and we can base our um our enclosures on that data number <laughs> number two i've already done number two you idiot so number three is a website or an app called iNaturalist. Now, once you've already got your environmental data, you've got your care sheet data, you've combined all that, you know roughly what temperatures, what lighting, um, and everything that kind of surrounds the environment is going for. Um, next up is kind of designing that environment. You might not want to put, and I wouldn't blame you, just a bag of aspen in the vivarium and a couple of hides, a cork tube, stuff like that. Um, you might want to recreate something that actually the animal would see in the wild. That potentially brings out wild natural behaviours in your animals. I've certainly seen that in things like Mr. Pine, my northern pine snake. Um, he doesn't just sort of live in a very basic vivarium uh, where you know he can kind of dig under some substrate if he wants to and sit in a cork hide. He's got logs to go through. Um, he's got like you know places to hide under different elevations and rocks to bask on um, to get some cryptic basking maybe um, you know in in a forest so things that kind of you can use to um, kind of exhibit natural behaviors in the snakes and keeps them keeps their brain working keeps them ticking over which is very important stimulation is really important we always think about stimulation in our pet cats dogs animals in the zoo um, and we should definitely bring that into our homes with our reptiles as well. So going back to iNaturalist, we can use that. Again, we need kind of a location um, or we need the species name. Um, and we can then type that in and we can find pictures that people have taken, mostly out in the wild, of that animal, an interaction with that animal. Um, and that gives us a really cool um, kind of look into that world into that country into that area without us being there um there are other ways of doing that which i've always done which is just frantically looking through google google image um, search everything you can the common name the scientific name the area and then go on youtube and look for that as well and you're trying to find kind of like wild spottings where someone's filmed maybe a 30 second video of that particular animal out in the wild and um, you can then sort of look in that video and go, oh, right, that's what it's got. It's like, you know, it's mainly shrubland or it's mainly grass over there. Or, you know, that's really dense with trees and logs and stuff and loads of leaf litter. I could do that. Leaf litter. That's cool. Uh, leaf litter is free. You know, you could go and get leaves, um, leaves and, um, you know, and, and do that, especially with something even like a corn snake. Um, you can absolutely um, go mad with kitting something out and just by seeing how things are, uh, things live in the wild okay so I'm going to quickly show you the iNaturalist website on my phone so this is kind of the first um, the first page that opens up uh, you can see here that I've, I've uploaded a, a picture of an otter that I spotted uh, and what we want to go on is this little bit uh, and we want to go on explore and then we can search and we can add an animal in the top here we can type, uh, let's go for Mr. Pine. So, uh, pit and fierce, and a
Oh, hope I can spell things right. Uh, if we go around here, we ain't got to type it all in. We can normally find it. There's a northern pine snake. Melanocious, melanocious. We're going to take away my location. So it's just searching these northern pine snakes everywhere. And here we get up some photographs. Uh, and we can kind of find the natural looking ones, you know. So, I mean, here is... Here's a northern pine that's been spotted in a clearing of a woods. We can see the floor there covered in uh, pine needles, a little bit of growth around there, a little bit of plant growth, um, but kind of making use of this um, sunny area, I would imagine. Um, let me see, let's go back. We can see we've got another pine snake there. We've got quite, so we can, we can see we've got quite a dry floor. Um, and we can see again we've got leaf litter, pine needles, mosses, a little bit of plant growth. Here we go, there's a, a pine snake that's been spotted here between what, what looks like uh, kind of like wedged in maybe maybe wood or maybe rock uh, with moss on it. So you know these are all just there's just there's hundreds of pictures here of uh, there's 185 photos here that you can use to sort of tailor your own uh, enclosure towards that animal so uh, let's go and compare that to what mr pine actually has um and uh, see see if we've got any similarities so here we are with mr pine as you can see we've got sort of logs we've got like a kind of forest floor substrate there is pine needles in there uh, there's normally leaf litter in there but it's all kind of been eaten uh, we're getting towards the end of the year where um, he's going into brumation in in like a couple of weeks time so um, yeah, we've normally got sort of like live mosses and a and, uh, bit of grass and stuff, but it's all kind of died off because he is a big snake and he sits on it, but we can, you know, we can do so much. So, you know, I've gone for this kind of like this rocky kind of dry sort of forest. Um, we've got a bit of a clear in here with slate rock. We've got more slate rock back there. Uh, we've got a few sort of dried out twigs and bits, nothing too kind of uh humid and wet and there's no pofos in there um you, you know we've got nothing like that but also this isn't just full of aspen um so uh you know it gives it gives different things we've got this sort of bar like you know this hollow tube here um this uh, this log that's sort of dried out so and he gets inside there and he pokes his head through there um, we've got more of like a rocky outcrop here um, and he can get in there and kind of use that as a humid hide or like a burrow sort of space um, but you can also go under all these. This soil is is pretty deep, you know. It's kind of like um, a few inches deep. So uh, we've got all of that. So I hope this video helped, guys. Um, don't forget to use the common name, the scientific name, and the locations of these animals um, in all your searches. That really helps broaden your kind of results in terms of getting photographs, data. Um, and just kind of things like that to, to help you uh, see everything you can about that animal online. So if you like this video, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up, a like, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to support the channel on Patreon, please head over to Patreon where you can, for £3 a month, uh, be part of our little crew over there. And I'll feature your name at the start of each video.